This video is going to show my method of etching on clear acrylic with an Atomstack A5 M50 Pro diode laser and the Lightburn software. I wanted to go ahead and start the video and show you the end result here. So this is a finished piece without the LED base light turned on. Here it is with a standard white light coming up from beneath, some red lighting, and a light blue lighting. I am very new to using laser engravers. Uh, this one you see here on the screen right now is my very first one, and I got it a little under a month ago. As I was going through, I watched a lot of videos from people doing the sort of clear acrylic etching, and they were using various types of paint on the acrylic or even a painted steel plate under it to get the desired results. In the videos, everything ended up looking really nice for each one they did. However, I'm incredibly lazy and I wanted to try to find a simpler method that didn't require as much prep work or cleanup at the end. So for this video, I'm gonna be doing it on the setup you see right here with the atom stack and a standard honeycomb bed. I'll be using a small piece of black poster board. I did try this with several other materials like construction paper and cardstock and everything like that, but this heavy duty black poster board is really the only one that gave the exact result I wanted. Um, for the finished product. I'm going to be doing the etching onto a four millimeter clear acrylic blank. And when you're prepping the material, you want to make sure you cut out your piece of black poster board to be a little bit larger than the clear acrylic, just to make sure you can kind of align everything on your uh, honeycomb bed and get the exact results you're wanting as you're going through it. So before I jump into what I actually did here in Lightburn, I did want to point out one weird change I had to make in the tool after I had it auto detect my laser. When I was first running through my tests, everything seemed to be performing a lot lower than what I found online in the manual for how it should work. I was having to use a lot higher power and a lot slower speed to get the exact same results. When I came in here and looked at the device settings for my laser, the S value max was initially set to a max of 255 instead of the 1000 that this specific laser should be using. Uh, you can check this value on your own by running a command and to get the console values. And you can see you want to set this value to whatever is returned by the dollar sign 30 setting. Once I tweaked this up to 1000 and saved it, all the tests ran the way I expected to, and I was getting the exact performance I wanted. It's quite possible that this was an anomaly with my system and it won't impact anyone else out there, but I did want to call it out just in case you do have the same laser and you're not getting the exact results you'd want within Lightburn as you're going through it. That's something you can check. One other caveat before I start going through here in the actual project itself, the settings I'm going to be showing you here are specifically for my laser. You may not need the exact same settings, even if you're using the same Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Um, what you want to do is you want to go through and run some of the test cuts and engraves on your material to determine the exact speed and power you want to get your desired result. With acrylic, it's very important to dial things in exactly as you need so you don't get any popping or burning onto the acrylic as you're making your layout. Okay, with that all out of the way, we'll go ahead and jump right in. So I'm going to start here with a blank project in Lightburn, and we go up to File and import, and we're gonna import this little PNG image. And this is something I created for um, the son of one of my good friends for a birthday present. Uh, just loaded in an image of a small line art of Grogu, and then I used the Mandalorian font to add his name into it. I'm gonna go ahead and click up here to zoom in so you can see the exact details of it. Um, once this is on here, you're gonna to wanna to double click on your layer for me, my settings are a speed of 3,000 millimeters per minute, a max power of 14%. And I must, may know that may sound a little bit odd. I tried it at 15% and I got some popping and a little bit of burning on a couple places. So that's kind of where you get those pinholes of lights that shine through. It doesn't give you a nice finished result. And when I did 13, I got a very uneven image layout. One thing I recommend changing, at least for me, is changing the image mode to grayscale and setting your min power to 0%. That'll allow the laser to completely cut off when it's going over any white areas or really thin light areas, and it lets you get a nice even tone as you cut etching through on the acrylic. 
One thing I will recommend is once you figure out the settings you need for each of your different materials, save them into a library. You can see here I have the settings for acrylic and go down here and I can select the etching an image on black poster board using the honeycomb and I can assign that up and that will pull up all the vet settings that I have in here. And I can go to the edit cut and you see it's those exact settings I did there, the 3014-0 at grayscale. I did this for all the different types of material I had tested on. You can do it for the different thicknesses and everything like that as well. And that way, once you find the exact settings you need for cutting your material or engraving on it, either dark or light color, um, you can go through, you can have those settings saved in here to make it very easy to load those back in without having to save it into an Excel sheet or a OneNote or anything like that. So once those are in place, I'd like to have my laser configured to start from the current position at the bottom left corner. I do this that way when I lay out the laser, I can manually position it to that bottom corner of where I want the, uh, the artwork to appear on the acrylic. And I can use these move commands to nudge it up, down, left, right, and get it exactly where I want. So that when I run through the framing, I can verify that everything's gonna be exactly where I want it to be. So once that's all set, you're ready to kind of set up material on your laser bed. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna let you see the engraving process. I'm gonna speed it up considerably fast because you can see here, if I go to the preview, it's gonna take about 20 minutes total to do the etching on there because it's got so many lines and it's got to go through and burn everything. Um, once we kind of get this done, I'll come back and I'll show a little bit more of the finished product as well as what the poster board and the acrylic look like immediately after the engraving happens. Okay, and here we are with the piece off of that honeycomb bed. You can see here the acrylic is still stacked on top of the poster board. It does slightly adhere to it from the heat, so you have to pull it apart a little bit. And when you separate them, what becomes evident is that the laser went straight through the acrylic and actually engraved onto the poster board underneath it. And that reflection back up onto the back of the acrylic is what gives you that etching effect, have that nice white look to it. Once it finished, I let it sit on the bed for a couple minutes just to make sure everything cooled off. I don't know if that's necessary, but it's worked for me each time, so I just stick with what works. And then I took the acrylic down to the sink and just rinsed it under with some water to make sure any particulates from the poster board that got onto it were nice and cleaned off. You will wanna be very careful when you're cleaning off the acrylic because it's very easy to scratch it or scuff it up, even if using paper towels. Um, you probably saw in the final piece image, there were a couple places where there's some scratch marks on it. And that's kind of from where when I was rubbing it under the water, I still managed to scratch it, even using a lint-free cloth to try to clean it up. Um, so I'm gonna end this video and just have a little bit of a cycle showing the LED base light in action, cycling through some different colors. Hopefully this was really helpful to someone and it helps you as you're going through and trying to figure out how to etch on the clear acrylic. By using that black poster board, I picked it up at a local craft shop for 99 cents. So it's very inexpensive and it's very easy to prep. You don't have to do painting and wait for it to dry or anything like that. So good luck to everyone out there with your laser engraving and I hope you have some really nice results.